Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. I'm my chow. And thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing all right. My chow, we're back again in little boxes on the internet. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, we'll share later. I was uh, in your neck of the woods recently, and uh, I think I spared you the uh, the company, but that's fine. Um, yeah, it sounds like it would have been a great time. Yeah, maybe, but uh, <laughs> not that day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Just kidding. Um, well, hope you're doing all right. Uh, your collection continues to sit behind you, hopefully continues to grow. But uh, it has not changed. All since right, the last time. fine. We'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're looking for, but or looking at, but it has. It's exactly the same. Well, probably to uh, our listeners, they'll just believe us. Oh yeah, it just keeps growing. I don't know what it is. They don't. They won't check. Well, now they do. No. Okay. I will make sure. The well, because you broke the there. illusion. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'd rather not lie to the good people who don't listen to this. Well, I can imagine like every week, you know, it's like it just adds a little bit more. And then like it just kind of clutters like this wall of just stuff <laughs> behind you, just like piles on top every so often. Is that how is that how it works? That's how I imagine it going like over time like and do a little time lapse of like how it grows. But um, anyway, sure. that's fine. Um, but it looks good. OK, just give it a few it. years. It'll, it'll happen exactly like that. Yeah, exactly. OK, well, I've kind of gone the opposite route. I've gotten quite uh stark minimalist there and just a plain plain background um <laughs> so i don't know yeah. i don't know i don't know what i'm doing here but no more mirror for you huh no for us i guess i guess not it's uh i think you're better off everyone's better off less to see <laughs> so anyway um cool yeah but yeah good to see you hope you're doing all right um yeah this uh i don't know what you've been up to uh over the past weekend i know you've shared you've just kind of been doing a lot of a lot of the same just uh you know but um I know you were talking Literally. about some some movies that you were watching and uh, uh oh yeah yeah uh, tell me again i forgot um yeah you know. so we did the paramount plus we got paramount plus over the weekend oh yeah mm -hmm. so i watched um what is it, the dungeons and dragons movie first because mm. i've been wanting to watch that and it's the only reason i even recommended wanted to do the trial for paramount plus is that right <laughs> okay yeah so, yeah because i don't know I, I don't really know anything that's on paramount plus but only wants to watch picard so Mm, you know, okay. There's that. All right. She's a Trekkie. Yeah. So that was a thing. Then we also watched Everything Everywhere All at Once. I have not seen it, so I was I've been waiting for it to go on streaming. I didn't realize Showtime was part of Paramount Plus. So Ah, got it. Oh, that's yeah. good. Glad you got to, to catch it. Um, yeah, I finally watched it. Well, I don't know. Did you jump on the bandwagon and what did you think about it? They're both good movies. They're both very funny. Uh for everything everywhere all at once. It's a little weird. Yeah. Like more than a little weird, but it was a fun watch. I will say I didn't realize it was so long. It was like two hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's for a bizarre movie. It's quite, it's quite yeah. long, but like yeah. I said, you know, it's, uh, when you get past all the, the weird stuff, all the bizarre, um, parts and stuff, it's, it's a fun family movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about family, but it's a fun movie. What are you talking yes. about? I think it's, it's, it's look at this way. It's a, it's a family friendly sci-fi oddity. How about that, definitely not family friendly. I think I think the family is, you know, it's pretty there. So, it's it's good for older families, I suppose, like teenagers. <laughs> yeah, bring to to, but I wouldn't bring like a Disney age, like a younger Disney age child for this. Okay, maybe not every family, but. Uh... But certain families, it's friendly. Okay, fine. How Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. You. That could be argued about everything, but okay. <laughs> well, I'll take it for this. So, very nice. Sure. Um, well, yeah, if you guys haven't uh, seen either of those, I guess that would be a good thing to add to your, to your list there. Yeah, um, definitely. I can understand why it won Best Picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's the bagel seasoning. I mean, really, uh, yes. really brings it up a notch. <laughs> I, would, I would hop in that bagel if I could. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, um, hope you enjoy your trial. And uh, 
yeah you watch <laughs> you have to watch a lot yeah. more yeah so okay Definitely. cool well while you were out um watching uh watching movies i was uh, of course eating um and i think this past week or so i was just uh, finding myself on the east side of um of town um i'll just kind of go through i did get a small selection here of uh, the things I did consume and I can share All them on the weekend. It's a- <laughs> I, sometimes I lose track. I mean, also depends <laughs> on when this is released. So I, um, there might be some, True. some time in between who knows. Yeah. But in this case, that's all in one weekend. <laughs> okay. All right. Well in this, yes. In the real time. Um, was this your finished. Monday off this week? Uh, this week. Yes. As, uh, okay. So that was three days. Not- so, Oh, oh, this coming week. So not last week. No, no. So this is all in two days. Sure. Or maybe 2.5, depending. Friday. Uh, yeah. Kind okay. Of Friday, so. oh, okay. But we'll start off with, with the Friday. Um, started off uh, in City Terrace um, at A's Barbecue. Uh, but uh, this time they, uh, they weren't serving barbecue. They were serving um, fried chicken sandwiches. So mm. this is uh, something that... Alan um, has kind of put on hold for a little bit and he's brought back after qu- a little while. Okay. Um, it can be a challenge, I think, to have like fryers and stuff and to fry it in the right way. But this is uh, this is what he calls the not a hot chicken sandwich because it's not hot chicken, um, but it is fried chicken and it is delicious. Oh, so um, it's a real thick cut, you know, um, and uh, it's fried really well. You got this nice refreshing slaw on there on this brioche bun. It's uh, from a local baker. It's just all beautifully packaged and it's all delicious. So, yeah. Um, and it'd been a minute since I had visit, visited A's anyway. So it was a good excuse to kind of get out there uh, after, you know, a long week uh, from the grind, if you will, and uh, <laughs> just to get out there. So it was good. Really enjoy that. Uh, so shout out to Alan and also to Eddie, uh, good seeing him too. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of the vibes that you get out there out in the back. Well, it's kind of front yard technically, but, uh, yeah, you can just pop in there and yeah. I mean, whenever they're serving, it's sometimes it's fried chicken, sometimes it's barbecue, sometimes it's smash burgers, you know, it's got a good, you got a good array of things to, um, to choose from whenever, uh, whenever they pop up. So yeah, that's A's barbecue. Um, also, because uh, clearly that wasn't enough for me, I think just right after I had, um, oh, since I was in the area, <laughs> drove down. To, right after, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. Um, you had Well, I had this little break, right? The driving itself takes some time, so it takes some time to digest. And sure, so, sure. Uh, so, yeah, just build up your appetite again. <laughs> no time. So um, this next spot out in um, kind of the East LA, uh, Montebello kind of area, this is um, a place called uh, Don Poyon, and uh, they serve tacos, um, but uh, they're, they really kind of um, distinguish themselves by making, um, by really kind of smoking, making these smoked meats, kind of barbecue style uh, kind of things, um, uh, including ribs. So th- these tacos that we see here are um, uh, tacos de costilla, or, you know, uh, tacos with ribs. So they just chop okay. up, you know, the ribs that they, that they cook there on, um, kind of, a on a, on a grill. Um, and they, they, they prepare them on these tacos and they're topped with, you know, onion, cilantro, guacamole, you know, and you got your salsas and stuff, but they also have plates with like just ribs, you know, you, you could buy mm-hmm. ribs on, um, uh, as a plate as well. So perhaps next time this has uh, been a place, I don't know, been, been wanting to try and um uh i might remember my i mentioned him before jose he had mentioned this place to me too so um it's too bad we didn't get to hit it up together but um it was it was quite good so uh they're out there um that's uh don Pleon. and then this i think i don't remember if i went there that same evening i don't know but one of these evenings <laughs> Um, I visited this place and maybe, you know, this, maybe you remember this, we had talked about this, not here, maybe offline, but this is a pasta gelato in, uh, in Silver Lake. And, hey, yeah. um, uh, this is, a I don't know, it's, it's kind of a longstanding uh, gelato spot in Silver Lake. I mean, even since we were in high school, I mean, this place was yeah, around. Yeah. 
So it's been around a, quite a while. I think they're still, it looks like, according to the picture, they're celebrating 17 years. Um, and, you know, it had been a while since I had visited there. And um, having having it having had it recently, I, I'm i just, uh, I'm sorry I hadn't gone, I hadn't visited more often because it was very good gelato, just nice, kind of mm -hmm. creamier, a little thicker. It's um, It was just a nice... Uh, array of flavors uh, to enjoy um, at this local spot that's been around. But I think, um, you know, they've, they've come under uh, the spotlight uh, recently, not necessarily because of their stellar flavors, but because of uh, their neighbors just a few doors down. And that's um, mm -hmm. uh, salt and straw. You know, they've, they've opened a, a shop right next to um, this place. And, um, the things that the space is owned by the same landlord. And there's uh there's an article here about, you know, kind of detailing, you know, all those things there, but it's, um, it's kind of bizarre, you know, um, it's kind of a, he said, she said, or didn't say whatever, like, uh, maybe I'm considering to, um, to, you know, what, what's next or whatever. And then, I don't know, it seems like the landlord just says, okay, well, we'll just, you know, let someone else come in or whatever. And, uh, I don't know. It it seems that they, you know, some people argue they could coexist, but I think when you have what is now really a, a big chain, one of the, you know, a growing chain so that Salt and Straw is and kind of a behemoth that it's mm -hmm. become, um, usually, you know, the mom and pop shops, you know, they, they tend to admittedly fall by the wayside, you know? Oh, it, yeah. They kind of succumb to the force, the attraction of the, uh, of the bigger guys, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and they had mentioned, and they're literally like, the, like the whole pot such a lot of story before. Yeah. And, um, on, on here. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy to see, um, what this is now, but yeah, no, I just, I remember going there, um, when I parked at the parking lot behind, mm -hmm. um, I could easily see like the building for salt and straw with all with its distinctive design, you know, has like mm -hmm. these distinctive lines and, and patterns and stuff on the building. Like I could tell, Oh, that's, that's them. And then the building next door here with pots of gelatos, you know, they're plain black kind of um, building and with the awning. Um, I could see that at least at that time, there a lot more people um, crowding around salt and straw naturally, I would say. Yeah. There were a couple people um, coming through for, for gelato, but definitely not as many, at least at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, they're still active. I mean, you check them out on Instagram, they got their flavors posted up there, what they're serving. And yeah, I mean, it's, um, I hope they can, uh, they can hang around a little longer. You know, I think they had the lease till at least, uh, maybe a couple more years or something like that. Oh, years. Okay. Maybe. But, um, as to what will happen after we're, Maybe it's not entirely clear, but we'll have to keep an eye on, on what's going on. But, um, I don't know. I was remind, I, I was driven to kind of come here because again, at this discussion that we had offline, um, or maybe you had at least seen that, uh, John did not believe that, um, he had been here in years past. <laughs> oh yes. I saw yeah. that discussion. Or at least back in high school he didn't believe that we had visited here it's like i've never been to pots of gelato <laughs> and um i i uh i proved him wrong let's put it that yes. way yes yeah the i dug searched. deep in the archives and i found uh and i found proof um probably actually when i think about it you know it was pictures of uh, him and me and and uh, patty as well and mm -hmm. um yeah. i can't remember it might have been patrick who uh might have brought us out here all those years ago. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, it was fun. Um, it was good. It was a good time. Um, but see, in that same corner, it's just it's just there. So hopefully, uh, while they're still there, hopefully you guys can check them out, pay a visit, get some an excellent example of what gelato is and can be. Um, it it's kind I of conflicting um, because I. Really like salt also, and straw too, right? Mm, I mean, yeah. I think right now, I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't visit salt and straw at this location. <laughs> you have this option here and I would, I would gladly take a gelato over it. 
Um, so you didn't go to both? No, sadly, no. Um, again, the the con the the internal conflict was too strong. So um, I just made sure to get um, two hmm. generous servings there of um, of gelato. So yeah. Anyway, but that's yeah. uh yeah. When you guys just keep an eye on it, and maybe we'll keep an eye and see what's going on with them pretty soon. Yeah, I will admit, I don't think I've been there since last year. It's been a while since I've been to mm. gelato. Well then, gelato specifically. Okay. Well, again, we'll um we'll go. Okay. Yeah, actually, maybe sure. actually probably this weekend we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna steal you away sure. and then just like take you. Oh, yeah, man. sure. We'll see yeah. how that goes. <laughs> Well, it's fine. Moving on, we um, staying here on the east side of town. Um, I visited uh, two two spots um, at uh, Sarah's Market in also mm. City Terrace. There are two pop ups going on. One here is uh, Hangovers, and um, uh -huh. we've yet to talk about them, um, but I hope to talk about them very soon. Uh, but Hangovers it makes some excellent smash burgers. Uh, definitely on should be on your list of rotations when you're trying to uh, get some burgers and. Uh, in town, but um, they have uh, two ver they have two variations, I guess. One is the original. Uh, you can see they're kind of in the uh, towards the back, which has the slices of pickle um, uh, lengthwise, and mm -hmm. um, and then you have uh, the tepic, which is uh, has the sliced ham and the cheese, um, and uh, and sauced up over there, as you can see as well. Ooh. Since I um, that. it's a breakfast burger. It almost, yeah, you could, <laughs> you could almost add a fried egg on there, right, and uh, make it a legit. Uh, but that is a you style, actually. Eggs. Yeah, no, that that could work too. Why don't we experiment with that? Let's let's see if we can get them to do something. Right. Like no, no, that. we'll buy the burger. <laughs> oh, we... and then take it back oh, and, we'll just... and add the eggs ourselves. Oh man, okay, yes. all right, uh, be a little experiment for us. Um, they um since since I last visited them. They had uh, changed their buns, I think sometime last oh. year. So uh, when they started, they were using um, Martin's potato buns. And uh, that was kind of a, kind of being a popular choice with a lot of burgers, smash burgers in particular. Um, in the beginning, you know, these, uh, these particular ones were hard to come by, I think, because they were only sourced out from, uh, from the East Coast. But they were, over time, they're easier to get. And so more people were putting them on. But... Um, I think uh, there was some controversy, I believe, around Martins, and um, and so I think as a um, a decision that among some some places, including these guys, they decided to change them out um, for these local uh, local spot um, that makes them. But it's still really good. It's not a potato bun; it's just a plushy kind of white bun, but they're uh, still still makes a still holds up really well, um, and. Uh, Still tastes really good, really nice and like a fluffy bun, plushy. So, um, but yeah, the, these are uh, the burgers of of hanger burgers. So, I I do remember that um, it was our friend Maria actually who who um, put me onto them, um, which is interesting because she's um, thousands of miles away. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so to to recommend a good spot, um, it was really good. Um, but right next to them. Uh, if I have this set up right, is this um, maybe a type of food that you will appreciate as well? These um, this Hell comes yeah. from a pop up called Eastside Cheesecakes, and um, they, as the name suggests, make cheesecakes. So they uh, there were actually two slices that I got. One here is the uh, this raspberry one, and uh, the other one, which was probably already demolished. Um, is like a was like this cherry strong cherry flavor uh, cheesecake. Um, mm. What's great is that everything is like made from scratch, including the cream uh -huh. cheese, including like everything is yeah, it's great. Um, so you know, obviously, it's going to be a little more to pay for a slice of cheesecake, but I think if you get to try okay. it, I think you'll it'll be worth you know what you're what you're getting. Um, they also make this like shake that I haven't tried, but it's like this kind of loaded like shake, you know, cream cheese and whatever in there. It's crazy, but, um, it sounds pretty indulgent. So I have to try it uh, sometime. I, I don't know. Maybe it sounds good, but the sort of the, the cake shake from Portillo's. Um, well, it's not, it's not a slice of chocolate cake. It's, 
Yeah. It's cheesecake, right? It'll so, be creamier. That's for damn sure. So there you go. But at the very least, my child, you got uh, you got your fix here for um, cheesecake. So, um, and then uh, I don't remember. If, well, the next spot we visited here uh, visited here was um, in East LA. Um, this is a uh, pioneer pioneer chicken. Um, I don't know if you had had pioneer chicken growing up i haven't but Oli has and she's very nostalgic and this is like the last pioneer chicken in la or something at least in our area technically in your area right i guess you're saying in la uh proper city technically yeah i guess there is another location in um i want to say bellflower um okay or downing one of those um yeah not that's still it's still la you know, County. greater LA, but yeah. So yeah. anyway, but, uh, this spot here, this is the one on Soto in the East LA region. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, as, as you said, it's nostalgic, you know, um, when growing up, uh, we grown up, uh, near Echo Park and, uh, down there on sunset is, um, was the old pioneer market, um, which has now mm-hmm. been made into a, I don't even know now what it is, but, um, Pioneer Market, and then right next to it uh, was the Pioneer Chicken. Pioneer actually has a fascinating history, and they were really on the, they were really growing. They had really a far reach throughout the city. Um, and then some crazy stuff happened that really just kind of took them all away almost overnight. I'll find the, um, I'll find the video that I was looking at. There's this, uh, this is guy that named, uh, or this, this guy that makes this uh, series called LA in a minute. And, um, he oh, highlights a lot of, um, you know, historical events, current events, food attraction stuff, like just kind of covering all, you know, just kind of a brief overview of like all these things that make LA LA. Mm-hmm. And, um, this was one of them. I think I remember. Um, but anyway, uh, despite their reach again, they, kind of went away very quickly except for these last couple of locations and um they kept the original recipe and i think that's still what they're trying to follow to this day yeah so uh what we see here is like a two-piece meal you know uh i think this is a leg and thigh and with a biscuit and two sides and um yeah it's a real crispy outside you know yeah oh hold on you can't just is there any hint or any clue that you can give about what caused them to all close down overnight? You can't just gloss over that. That's kind of, that's a big deal. It is. That's why I'll share the resource that probably oh, explains it better than I do. Hand. It's probably like okay. embezzlement or something, something weird, oh, okay. you know, <laughs> I see. some okay. shady dealings. You can put it that way. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He probably bought it, brought it, you know, brought it on upon himself. So it's, oh, damn. Um, Unfortunate. Okay. it is, Good it is. But, um, but again, that location out in Echo Park, yeah, that uh, definitely has a lot of memories. So now mm. I think, I don't even know what's out there anymore as far as the food stand. It oh, used to be a like a, a, a hero spot, you know, it spells like the, the Greek oh. heroes and, but, and then it's like oh. a pizza, like a Little Caesars maybe now, I think. <laughs> Interesting. Um, and then, at, well, for reference, I guess that's, uh, that's location is where uh, El Russo kind of serves out now like mm. on, on the street or whatever like that it's that area so anyway but um yeah the the skin of the fried chicken is like super crispy you could really mm-hmm. like yeah i have a really satisfying like crunch and bite oh, good. and um and the and the inside the meat is like super juicy it's um it's really something else so it was really best eaten fresh really enjoyed um served fresh and um and the biscuit's also real good it's a fluffy biscuit um it's uh yeah it's uh it's just overall was a good hit of nostalgia so um that's uh pioneer chicken so yeah that, well, yeah, that walgreens i've been i've been on that little caesar so many times <laughs> so it is a little caesar still yeah yeah and, and yeah, you yeah. mentioned walgreens that's right it's a walgreens and then there's like another it's like there's also attached like a smaller like market like thing there natural too. food and vitamins lessons yeah i could do with that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well 
Bring Same. back, bring back Pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but for those of us who've had Jollibee versus Pioneer Chicken, how would you compare? Um, you know that's hard. Um, the flavors are a little different. You know, I think to be honest, I think Jollibee hits a little harder. A better um, fry. Uh, I think flavor wise. I think the oh, fry okay. here is a little different. Um, mm-hmm. I think I enjoy yeah, is more breaded. I think so. Like- I think I enjoyed biting into this, um, mm-hmm. you know, this crispy or skin or whatever. It, yeah. But okay. Jollibee definitely brings, brings it up. Uh, <laughs> well, again, Jollibee's okay. technically a little bit more accessible, you know, to some than others. So Nowadays, um, yes. yeah. So maybe that's the reason convenience, you know, it's always, always important. But if you do have a chance to visit at either of the two existing locations, Pioneer, please do, because it's pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Um, oh, we're not done with food. Oh, no. We're with not. With your weekend. With your weekend, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> your two and a half days. Yeah. This is how much we can. This is, uh, you know, I used to be able to do this stuff in one day, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, the age is getting to you. Ooh. But I thought I'd just take it easy, right? <laughs> oh, that was just... <laughs> This next spot is, um, I don't even remember where it is now. I want to say, uh, down, hold on. I got to look this up now. This is, this spot is called Taco Natso, and they are probably one, if not the original spots for, um, fish tacos in the LA area. Um, <laughs> Bellflower is the one I went to. And, um, here we just see three, um, tacos, fish tacos, um, they're pretty big. They're about, what are the cost? Maybe like $3 a taco, but they're pretty big. So, um, not that I, um, not that they, not that I couldn't eat all of them. I, I did. Okay. Of so. course. <laughs> There's no doubt there from anyone. <laughs> exactly. So, um, that was, uh, taco not so. So they have in, in that location, at least there's like a proper sit down restaurant and then they have like kind of this express kind of takeout kind of a uh, stand as well. So you can, um, you can choose either. I, I just took it, uh, you know, to go and enjoyed it uh, elsewhere. But um, as far as fish tacos go, like if you want a good example of a good fish taco, this would be great. There's also a hand, mm. you know, handful of spots in L.A. that serve great fish tacos. But um, I guess if you want one of I mean, probably where it all began, uh, this is this is the spot to go. And they have a handful. They have a small handful of, uh, of locations. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that's. That's what we have just real time yeah. follow up the um the other pioneer chicken is in bell gardens um okay so you have again la uh, and then bell gardens so um again we'll share that stuff and they know where to find it okay i can't this probably i don't know if this is the last one but uh this, no, there's one more there is actually but um i think what i have a picture for is this one here this is uh mm-hmm. for tea master in little tokyo and so, um, they specialize, Tokyo, you say. <laughs> hmm. sounds familiar. <laughs> kind of does. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know if there's, uh, some FOMO to be had, you know, um, or some, uh, Maybe a little. or some TFTI. I don't, I'm not sure, hmm. but, um, I don't know if you know anyone out there in little Tokyo, but if you do make sure you, uh, you send them over here because uh, this ba- this plot is pretty good. So. Oh, is it? <laughs> that looks very familiar. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you've been or if you or if you're familiar with the area, but uh, it's. Uh, Can't say that I am. Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe you got to try it out. Um, well, uh, Team Master specializes uh, in matcha, and they serve different, you know, matcha in different forms, whether like in a like in a latte or drinks or stuff, but. This one is, this is what I usually get is the soft serve, um, sprinkled with some matcha. Thankfully, you know, matcha, if you want it really authentic, it's a real strong flavor. It's like, yeah, it, yeah it's like the earth. So it's, it's strong, <laughs> but, um, like the earth, <laughs> but thankfully okay. to the, uh, to the American palate, it's, uh, you know, they make it a little less earthy, um, but it's nice. It's a good soft serve. Um, both the quality of the 
the soft serve itself and then you know the amount of matcha in there is uh, just right to know that you are eating matcha but also you're not digging into the center of the earth so <laughs> it's um it's it's real good small shop um out in that uh, honda honda Vig- village plaza unrelated or on another note you know across the street right is um oh. is no longer the office depot i didn't even know that oh, uh, that's correct that had gone away or when that when that happened now it's a, like a smoke shop or something um, oh, is that what it is i actually don't know i don't know i just i thought i saw the name with, the, with some word smoke in there or something so i assumed it was some oh, sort okay. of smoke shop the biggest smoke shop ever if it replaces yeah, an office yeah i know it's good <laughs> for all your smoking needs it's like um but you know as always as we know it's probably just more, more better known as a glorified parking lot so mm-hmm. um yeah everyone uh, wants a you know, a valet spot or something, uh, or pay to park, that's where you go. So, um, but, uh, team master, um, and then, uh, the last spot to mention, which I don't have a pick for, um, was also in little Tokyo at, um, at Karaku and, um, Karaku is an old, you know, old school spot, been there a long time. Um, back in the day used to just uh, go there like late at night, have a late night uh, meal over there whether it's ramen or donburi or, you know, whatever. Um, but met up there with um, Mr. Uh, Fred Teo, uh, brother of uh, our friend Elaine. And uh, we just, you know, had lunch and uh, had a good uh, good time catching up. He had recently visited uh, Japan, and it was actually his idea to uh, to meet up here. He was just kind of craving something, um, Japanese in general, I guess. But okay. uh, I don't know what your thoughts are. Just like coming, it's like he just came back, and then he's just like. Uh, if I just came back, how long? In the actually, future? maybe not just came back. It's been at least maybe two or three weeks, maybe since he came back. Okay, that's not as bad. Yeah, I was thinking it was like right after because when Oli came back from Japan this year, the day after we we went to Little Tokyo. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. to look at apartments. We were looking at apartments in Little Tokyo, and then. But of course, you were in the area already, so you might as well, right? Oh yeah, literally the day after she came back, she yeah. came to Little Tokyo. Yeah, so, um, well, we, she knows it's not the same. Everyone knows it's not the same. I know you're just looking for that hit. It's like, oh man, I just need that hit again. It's like maybe this will do it, and then you just go and you're like, uh, no. no. Um, well, you're in Little Tokyo now, so um, you could just I don't know, um, just indulge yourself all the time in Japanese. Yeah, I can fare. go to uh, Tea Master whenever I want. Yeah, if you've never been, or if you, mm. <laughs> you can check it out. <laughs> oh man! Uh, so, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, okay. I'm not one of the real friends that we discussed last time. I understand. <laughs> Remember, there should be no qualifiers. Um, but yeah, friend is also pretty. Yeah, pretty generous term for what this is. But <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Ugh. A um, hostage situation. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to have you. Um, well, we uh, yeah, good, good. <laughs> well, that wraps up. I think the uh, uh, the weekend there in the uh, kind of east side. The two days. Town. Yeah, exactly. Your two days. My God, it's fine. Um, more to explore, more to love. So. Um, but yeah, there's a lot and hopefully a lot more to come. So uh, again, we got to get you out there uh, somewhere. I don't know. I know you're super busy, but uh, it's fine. We'll have to steal you away. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was kind of a little look into what was uh, been going on. And uh, speaking of food, you know, thank everyone again for joining us. We talk about our food adventures, these local mm-hmm. spots and pop-ups that we visit with. Uh, I visit, I don't know, good food and uh, good people, but yeah. Um, Today, we wanted to continue talking about food, um, but we wanted to kind of dig into the uh, the food groups once again, back to the foundations, it seems. We go back, in this uh, case. The uh, biggest level. <laughs> the widest. The widest yes. level. <laughs> the most important. They are. Um, it's In this case, uh, we're talking about barbecue and, and burgers. So, um, and actually, this episode, we've um, got quite a bit to cover um almost a quite uh, a triple threat if you will because we kind of got three three places i wanted to um highlight today and talk about 
And they're kind of all together because they are kind of related, especially the first two. Um, but they're all kind of related in some way. I mean, at the very least, they all have to do with some sort of meat product, but um, <laughs> and overconsumption. But that's what all of these that's are. That's literally anyway. everything you do. <laughs> that's what these all are. <laughs> Not just these, these, everything, you everything, do. yeah, everything, just in general, just uh, excess. And um, I will be surprised if there's ever a vegetarian place that gets covered in one of these episodes. If anything, it would be like an April Fool's, Fool's. <laughs> or I would have really had to like lose a bet or just some <laughs> terrible, uh, some terrible something. So, um, but not today, okay. <laughs> not not anytime soon i hope well you know again some of the places we talk about do incorporate some form of vegetable That's usually fine. you know That's fine. but, but uh, as long as it's not the focal point of the place then it's all okay exactly so uh the first spot we wanted to talk about today is um flat point barbecue and um flat point is kind of in this list of rotations of, you know, barbecue, Texas style barbecue places um, that I've been uh, fortunate to know about and visit and have my share of um, delicious uh, Texas barbecue, um, including like ribs and brisket. And I think honestly, I don't remember exactly where I had um, heard them from or heard about them from. Um, of course, again, this was during the time when I was really into um, you know, this barbecue kind of rotation. Um, but, uh, they were, uh, probably, probably one of the dishes they were most, uh, probably that stood out to me was a lamb pita. So they had smoked lamb, you know, on this pita. Um, and of course they were making these other, uh, cuts of meat too, brisket and so forth. But like, I think that's what caught a lot of people's attention. So it certainly caught my attention. And so that's something I've wanted to, you know, to visit for, uh, for a while. But, um, but uh, again, this is, uh, this is flat point. This is happens to be their Instagram page, but they've got, they, they do a lot. They've, they've done a lot as far as the actual pop-up. It's kind of gotten a little quiet as far as the actual regular rotation of pop-ups and stuff, mm. but, um, they are still kind of busy, um, with the pot with, um, you know, collaborations and stuff like that. But they have another venture uh, that we will get into uh, a little later on as to um, kind of what's taking a lot of their time these days. But um, but as far as uh, the barbecue scene goes, you know, uh, if you wanted good barbecue, it's uh, Flat Point was definitely going to be, you know, one of those places you would visit. And um, let me see if I can uh, bring up at least one of these these visits. One of the first visits was out in, I want to say the Las Vilas, kind of East Hollywood area. And that was at, um, is that a place I want to say was, or is it my notes? I have my notes here for all things. It's called uh, Bar Cavell. Um, and again, they were serving, you know, their brisket and things like that, but they also had that lamb pita. So I was definitely keeping an eye on that. So this was my first time to try them out. Um, just on that stretch of, um, I'll say that's Hollywood or something out there. And, uh, we have the brisket, we have the pe the lamb. And it was, uh, I mean, I just remember it was, um, kind of refreshing. Like it was a the lamb was really well smoked, great flavor. Um, you know, people might, uh, always have their complaints about a gamey taste of lamb, but this was, you know, you could taste a little bit, but it's like not, um, I mean, it's definitely enjoyable, let's put it that way. Um, but that's the first thing I remember just kind of digging into and, uh, that was very enjoyable, but then the brisket as well, you know, um, just in case for the uninitiated, you know, um, I, I suppose the name really comes as a play on, um, the terms used as part of the brisket. You have the flat and the point. Um, I forget which is which I want to say, I'm just gonna just off the top of my head, the flat is going to be like the lean cuts and the point is where you have the moist and fatty cuts. You can fact check me right now if you want. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it right yeah, now. They... <laughs> While I continue to talk about this, but um, I mean, both were just stellar. I mean, they were small bites at that time, but they were um, they were very good. Um, and I knew that I would be 
you know, coming back. And, you know, this was, you know, early on, they were just, they just had these tables set up, you know, like a little, um, you know, set up there. Uh, nothing too fancy. It was just uh, Danny and a couple um, of his guys just kind of helping out. But this would not be the last time to visit them. And um, this would be obviously not be their last time to, uh, to, to turn out like really good, um, really good barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the, um, the next spot I have, um, I don't remember if it's necessarily the next time I visited, but it's definitely the next time I have here was, um, out in Santa Monica. So you'd probably find them like moving forward. You probably find them more on the West side, Santa Monica, maybe Culver city, things like that. Um, but, uh, this, this pick here was actually more of a, like a, a way to start the meal. It's more like a snack, actually a slice of brisket, you know, on a piece of bread. I think there's actually a term for that. I think they call that the fold over. Um, I don't remember if that's an official term or, or something, but they, um, that's what that is. Slice of brisket, piece of bread, some onion there. I mean, it's uh, I call it a day. You'd be real satisfied, but of course, that's not the only thing that um, I would get. Uh, there's also a small plate. Um, this here, in particular, this is a pastrami beef rib um, nice. with mustard seed on there, um, and like kind of this and this sausage. It was kind of a, a hot. I forget what they call. It. I mean, I forgot what type, but it was a, like a hot sausage. Um, and both of them were just. I mean, they were stellar. I mean, the pastrami had a real good, real great brine, um, good bark on the rib. Um, and these are, you know, these are the days when I'm like just chowing down on a whole beef rib. No problem. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was a great, real great bite. And this was out in Santa Monica at, um, this spot called Surf's Liquor. And we'd find them there a little regularly, um, you know, over time, they would probably set, set up there. Uh, to do most of their pop-ups, but, uh, yeah, this was, um, this was out there. There's always, a there's always a good line. So had to kind of do a good amount of waiting, but, uh, the waiting was certainly worth it. But, um, yeah, I mean, there was just some, some things that, uh, you know, Danny would really take, uh, keep a close eye and like really take a good, good care of on, you know, and the preparation and, and how things were presented, um, real thoughtful, you know, in the way, uh, food was, uh, was kind of served, but yeah, they were real friendly and, um, just real good, um, real good guys. Um, so that was out in, um, in Santa Monica at Surf Liquor. But, um, but the next thing, you know, I wanted to, to say is, uh, you know, like I said, they would pop, pop up there, mostly in that area or around that area. But as we've seen before, um, in the past, uh, there's as much as, as the attention grows in a positive way, you will also see attention grow in other directions, in other ways. You know, other people will react um, maybe in less positive ways. Um, and we've seen these with some pop-ups, you know, they, they get real popular. A lot of people, you know, flock to and get uh, really, really get a lot of attention. Um, and there are some people that, uh, are not happy with that for whatever reason. Okay. Right. And so in this case, uh, there's an article that had gone out that, um, you know, in this case, and what are their pop-ups that, um, flat point got, uh, they got fined, they got shut down, uh, cause of some complaints, you know, people unfortunately don't, um, totally understand the, uh, the whole setup of um, smoked barbecue or having a smoker, things like that. And, you know, it's just taking up, um, you know, the smoke just uh, takes up, I don't know, pollutes the air or they say something, this or that. I don't know. But they're just not happy. People just, people just aren't happy. Okay. It's just crazy. I mean, yeah. Just generally speaking. But um, unfortunately, they had to kind of get um, the short end of that. So, yeah, I mean that was just they they had to kind of close up and you know kind of re regroup and they were back after a while, um, but I think uh, you know popping up in that way um, kind of had to change a little bit. They did find themselves back there over time, but like again they had they they started like moving around a little more um, because yeah I mean just having that kind of attention you know people are gonna follow mm -hmm. you know so yeah that was. Um, that was uh, that 
but I think in some ways, if you, you can argue that again, because there's a lot of attention, maybe they're doing something right. You know, they've got, got a lot of, uh, but they have a lot of good support. So people definitely, um, are behind them. I mean, they've also done, I mean, this was also around during the time, you know, the pandemic. So like everyone, you know, they would, uh, do pop-ups, uh, like pickups and stuff, right? People, they would, um, vacuum seal, they could vacuum seal their, their, uh, their food and you can pick it up. You know, I remember there was a time when I picked up, uh, like brisket, there are some ribs and, um, I think they even had like porchetta as well. Um, Ooh. yeah, it was, it was all quite good. All vacuum sealed, ready to, you could freeze it. And then whenever you're ready, you could just, um, just reheat it and it's good to go, you know, just as almost just as good, um, when you got it. So, yeah, I mean, they also had to, you know, re-strategize and do, do their thing to, to get through that crazy time. So, yeah, I, I just, as I'm looking back, like I just, uh, it's just one of those places I'd wish I had, um, I'd visited more. I had had my share and I'm glad I did, but, um, I just wish I had, you know, I'd gone out more. So I don't know. Uh, it's interesting, but, uh, it's, um, I'm glad what, what I've had, what I, I had, um, this, uh, pop up here is out in. Let's say it's in Santa Monica or out west. It's at this place called okay. Good Good People Coffee. Um, but yeah, just here, this was a tray of uh, there was some sliced brisket. Yeah, that's pretty much all they had. I think I went there and I think they had sold out of most of the stuff. So they still had okay. brisket, which is great. Um, and they and I think I also had a sandwich there. Uh, yeah, had a like a I don't remember nice. if that was yeah. So a chopped brisket sando, I want to say. Um, and slices of brisket. So not a bad day. Um, so nothing, nothing more to say than otherwise than, yeah, it was a, it was a good bite. I mean, just, um, just reminding me again, like smokiness and a good bark and everything. Um, and it reminds me of like, you know, these days again, where I would visit like multiple places, you know, the same day, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and have room. Uh -huh for all of these, you know, Ooh. it's like, it's kind of crazy. Youth. Um, actually, if I, if I can go back, um, from that first pop-up, um, I remember that, um, that was just one of the many spots that day, um, back in that, uh, Barcovel, uh, visit oh, because really? that was the day, um, I had visited hamburgers nice for the first time. We oh, talked about them the recently. Day. Yeah. Yeah. It was their first visit. I'd also had dragged off ferns, like some ribs. Oh, of course. Um, I'd ordered uh, some dough box later that day for pickup. My God. Yeah. Like a whole pie. Okay. That's yeah, how they serve. Oh, not the small one, but the, the big one. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, and some Goldberger. Because I think uh, at that time, they were uh, kind of setting up at that Silver Lake spot. Um, mm. and so, um, if you remember there on, on, uh, no, no. If you remember there on sunset, they had, they kind oh, of, yeah, like the yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. 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 So that was all there. That was all part of that, um, that rotation. So, hey. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, so I know so nostalgic. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the other visits I can bring up here was a visit to, um, to Long Beach. And actually, uh, the location here is a place we've talked about, uh, recently at uh, trademark, uh, brewing in Long Beach. Um, this was still during pandemic, but like it was during the time when, you know, people were kind of allowed to serve food and, you know, kind of be outdoors, uh, safely or whatever. So, um, I paid a visit and I tried to make up for lost time. So we just have a little bit of everything here. We have some brisket, we have some burnt ends, Ooh. uh, some sausage and, uh, and a sando here as well. So yeah, Glorious. just, um, just a little bit of everything, a sampling, um, of flavors here, but it, uh, it really hit the spot. Yeah. Um, I don't remember where I was at that time, um, but it probably was coming from, um, somewhere on the west side, and then drove down to Long Beach, 
And again, you know, I come here, I go to all these like breweries and whatever, like, but I come here for the food. So yeah, I, I don't know what to say. It's just, oh, yeah, what's your favorite brew from there? Hmm? Um, must be something hazy, something, something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we have another, there's another tray here. It's not my tray. Um, but this was a more full tray had, you know, uh, brisket, pulled pork, uh, sausage, and then some sides here with, uh, with beans and potato salad. So, um, yeah, again, um, everyone's just trying to navigate the, uh, the pandemic. It's just, of course. Yeah. So it, it was crazy, but, um, you know, people survive and, and get through it, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that was a trademark, trademark brewing. So, um, yeah. One of the many more things, like I said, they, they've had a lot more like collaborations and pop-ups and things. Um, like I said, I think the, uh, pop-ups themselves have kind of quieted down. Um, but like we saw earlier, maybe like on their Instagram page, you can even see here in these first few pages, like some of their collabs, uh, like here, Giada is like a very well-known, uh, deli in, uh, Santa uh-huh. Monica. Um, and uh, they've also done, he seems, there, there seems to be a, has a, a thing for um, whole hog. So he's done a few whole hog cooks. Like this one here, I believe is with uh, Moose Barbecue. Like um, Moose wow. was uh, having their, like, what's their anniversary or something at the, the restaurant. And so um, they kind of had, did all these collabs uh, with, with lots of other barbecue guys, including, uh, including uh, Flatpoint here. Um They've been to the Heritage uh, event, like the Invitational that they have for their anniversaries, and just many other, so many other things uh, that they've been able to do. But um, you will see shortly that uh, one of the things that, um, one of the other ventures, I guess, that uh, they're kind of up to now um, still has to do with meat, but not necessarily with uh, with barbecue. And it kind of... Um, transitions us to the next spot we're going to talk about um which is probably one of the more well-known maybe spots now you know, one of the more mm-hmm. popular spots it deals with our next food group with uh, with burgers so during the time of the pop-ups for flat point um i guess uh you know danny he has this uh he has this friend named max and um, they had this idea, uh, Max has this idea to uh, make burgers. And uh, at the time, I mean, it kind of made sense. They could use maybe some of the trimmings from their uh, from the barbecue and make burgers from that. Or they just make their own blend. I don't know. Whatever. So regardless, um, burgers are the name of the game. And um, they've come to be known as the spot now known as uh, heavy handed. So um, heavy handed is probably one of the hottest spots, I think to, to get a burger in, in LA they're out mm-hmm. in, um, you know, Santa Monica. Now they have a beautiful uh, brick and mortar, a lot of great outdoor space by the beach. I mean, I don't, I don't think I could ask for, I could ask for a better combo burgers by the beach. Um, but, uh, they, um, <clears throat> they put that together. It was probably some of the, you know, some of the best burgers, smash burgers you could have, uh, just a real simple kind of menu. I actually bring it up here. It's a real simple menu. I mean, you can get a single, double, triple, um, and you can get fries. I mean, like at that time getting fries at a pop-up, uh, it's kind of difficult to be honest. And, um, because you got to have a fryer, you got to fry it right, you got to keep them warm. It can be tricky. Um, but somehow they managed to do it. So they started off as a pop-up as well. You know, they set up at different parts. Again, probably mostly on the west side. You'll find them there. But um, later on, we'll see in a little bit um, how that's kind of uh, grown over time. But um, like I said, they have grown to this like kind of powerhouse, this great spot that you can have great burgers from um there on on the west side uh where are my where are my picks i gotta find them here but heavy-handed um but i think what really sets it apart aside from a great smash is um is a good sauce 
Now you have purists, you know, say like all you need is meat, cheese, bun, which can be very good on uh, on their own. But, you know, depending on um, who you are, you could have uh, other great additions um, that can enhance or just add to the enjoyment of your meal. But um, this was, I think, maybe the first visit I got to um, to try out. This was, um, man, I, I, I think this is somewhere in Venice. It was uh, at a parking lot somewhere out there. Um, but this was uh, one of my first tries. You can see, again, a double smash burger, flat patties, melty cheese. And then they got that, um, they have that heavy sauce, um, as they put it. Just a nice, uh, enjoyable, creamy sauce. Got some pickle in there. So not real complicated, you know. I think aside from the sauce... I think it would be like a, uh, probably a typical smash burger fare in there. It's not, um, it's nothing too, too fancy or anything, but it is, all I know is that it's, um, it's really good. Um, which I think we've had our share of, um, mm-hmm. heavy handed at least, at least once I want to say we've enjoyed it. Yeah. I do I remember the menu specifically. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Well, the menu is real simple too. So not much to. Even yeah. just the aesthetic. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, just um, really pops out at Bright you. Right, know? orange. Yeah, yeah exactly. Definitely. Yeah, but um, yeah, this was um, this was from Heavy Handed um, out there. One of the you know later on, uh, they kind of grew up and graduated to uh, to this food truck, and uh, this is probably what you remember. Um, this bright yes, kind of yellow, you know, food truck, uh, with this, you know, they, they already kind of had in mind, you know, the aesthetic you're saying, like the aesthetic and the look that they wanted. Um, and they really nailed it, you know, a real simple menu, burgers, fries, um, and, and, uh, just something real simple, but, uh, yeah, they would serve out, um, out of, um, again, in Venice, you know, kind of that area. So they would, um, they would, they would serve a lot of people out there. But of course, the whole at the whole time, you know, they had their sights set on uh, probably something bigger, um, and so thankfully, um, they they got the following. They got a lot of people. They got you know so much attention. I think this was our visit at uh, this was at Monkish, and so mm-hmm. um, whether well, it was us, I don't remember. But um, it's just well, again the only time I remember. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Unless you've been there. At Monkish with before, another time. Yeah. And, <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> hey, who knows? Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, no, this was uh this is out of Monkish. So um but again the trucks out there, you order um and they have you know, Monkish is as you might know, it just has a, has a great selection of um of beer and good drinks. So um but over time, like I said, they had worked their way up to something that they wanted, uh, which was a brick and mortar. And so finally, like they did secure, um, a spot in Santa Monica and, um, they've made, oh. you know, a space, uh, to call their own. They brought that aesthetic there. They really, uh, they really leaned into that and made a real nice spot out of it. Um, a lot of outdoor seating, you know, that's namely what it is. There's even some seating like on the sidewalk, some curbside, uh, kind of seating nice. there. But, um, yeah, the menu is more or less the same. You got a single, double, triple. Um, but now it comes, they also have ice cream, uh, like soft serve stuff. And, um, they also have, uh, they have beer. So they have drinks there too on tap and Uh. things like that. So it's, uh, it's a great, it's a great, like kind of pairing of everything. Just a marriage of like all these different things come together. It was really good. Um, so you can't go wrong i think if you're looking for a good burger in that part of town i think you found it with uh with heavy handed um so yeah i mean i just had to have a little bit of everything just had to have the smash burger order fries some soft serve they all hit the spot i mean it was just as good as ever and the soft serve was also real good i mean um i would definitely order it um if i have a chance i'd order it almost every time i would uh i'd visit so um yeah, they they haven't really strayed away from what they really set out to do to make a real good smash burger with with some sauce to go with that, and yeah, and now they have a home by the beach and it's just a real fantastic uh, 
kind of bite to have. So, I mean, we've had our share, right, of Smash Burgers. Um, of course. This should definitely be somewhere in the rotation um, if ever, whenever you get a, a chance to do that. So, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so we've talked about um, our barbecue. We've talked about our burgers. Um, there's one other spot I want to, uh, to talk about today and kind of mm-hmm. highlight. And um, it kind of leans into um, barbecue, back to barbecue, but kind of in a, a different take of it. Um, smoked meat for sure. But um, in this case, it's, uh, it's a smoked, it's smoked pork. Um, and it's from this, uh, this girl named uh, Rebecca and uh, from her pop up, The Bad Jew. And um, which I might have sung of its praises um, mm-hmm. more than a number of times to you. <laughs> yes, I do. I know. You remember you. them? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great name. Yeah, it is a great name. Um, I think, so Rebecca um, is is the, the brains behind the bad Jew. She was, um, I think, just formerly like doing real estate or something like that. And, uh, she was doing that while she was putting this together, but I, she had, she had shared her story and she had always wanted to do something in food. And, um, I know I'll share a, a video in the notes of a interview that she has with, um, uh, Kevin from Kevin's barbecue joints. It's a good podcast. If you want to keep in touch with like all, all things barbecue and whatever, but this is one of the episodes was, um, with, with, uh, with her and, um, yeah, I mean, she always wanted to do something in food and, um, the name comes from the fact that she, you know, kind of this rebellious nature that, uh, although she has these Jewish roots, um, doesn't really, uh, adhere as far as the diet goes. She uh, made the signature kind of, um, uh, you know, food called the, uh, that she calls the pork strami, which is a pork, uh, which is a pastrami, you know, it's pastrami brined with, um, you know, pork, usually that's done with beef, right? That's why we have a lot of pastrami brisket, pastrami beef ribs. We have places mm-hmm. like, um, you know, our Jewish delis like Langer's and Brent's and, you know, all that, um, you know, those are typically, you know, with, um, you know, with beef, but, um, you know, pork, uh, definitely is, a definitely a dietary cautionary in, uh, uh, in that culture. But, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, to put, it, to put it lightly, but um, yeah. she's uh, definitely made a way to make this her own. And the reason I, you know, highlight here is because um, I, I believe the way she started is because she knew, um, she knew Danny from Flatpoint and uh, she was learning and um, kind of figuring out what to do. I think he had helped her out, you know, in kind of the techniques of smoking and mm. uh, smoking meat and using a smoker and how to do that whole thing. And so I think even to the extent of, you know, uh, letting her use his smoker to prepare her food for these pop-ups mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's what she would, um, that's what she would do. And, um, I had met Rebecca actually through, um, my visit to Goldberger and I may have mentioned before, I don't recall, but yeah, at, at some of the, there was one pop-up particular where I remember meeting her for the first time. And, uh, you know, she has this very kind of lively, bubbly personality, just very friendly and just, um, you know, very outgoing, you know, kind of attitude, um, super friendly and everything. Um, but, um, she, again, she always wanted to do something in food. So she was helping out. One of the things was with Goldberger, just helping him, you know, with his Um, Mm pop-up. I'm I'm sure she was doing other things as well, but uh, that's where I knew her best from. And then um, even during the time when he was at that Silver Lake location, you know, she was helping out there in the beginning. Um, But she had mentioned to me, certainly at some point, like, hey, I've got this, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try this pop-up. I'm going to try to do this um, at my place or whatever. And uh, like you got, you know, like you to try it. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously down, um, I, uh, remember visiting there. It was out in East Hollywood. Um, one of the homes or the home she was at or whatever. And, um, 
I don't remember. It was a nice home. It was a uh, kind of one of those bungalow style houses out there on Normandy or something like that. And um, you just kind of walk up, you know, up to the patio and actually it was in into the house. You actually go inside and um, had this nice kind of open like kitchen with the island in there. And yeah, they were um, kind of making the food. Are you OK? What you give me this Norman? look. What? <laughs> what? Normandy and what? Uh, it's just where my parents are, where I used to live. So uh, I want to say like maybe, let's say Santa Monica, for example. Oh. Just, yeah. So yeah. not too far, right? You know, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm talking yeah. about. Exactly. Um, so uh, hmm. definitely a local find at that time. Very local. Yeah. So um, I remember that first visit was, uh, I'd gone there with uh, uh, Chef Mayo. We've uh, mentioned a few times here. But yeah, once per episode contractually. Yeah, it seems, it's, yeah, it seems that way. <laughs> um, but uh, we'd gone there with him, and um, you know, he had his order, I had mine. Uh, there were two at that time. There, were, I think, there are two main offerings. There was um, the Danny Boy and the uh, and the Rebecca. And oh, nice. um, I can't remember offhand which was which. I know it should be pretty obvious to me, but uh, I don't remember offhand. But um, yeah, one of them was, you know, obviously like the pork strami. The other one was a, uh, like a corned pork kind of deal, Ooh. I think. Yeah. So, um, but this was like the first iteration here, you know, um, you have, uh, some of the, the pork strami and this cheese, just, um, kind of light kind of slaw kind of deal, um, on some, you know, untoasted, uh, kind of, uh, bread here, which is. I don't know, like for that first, uh, for a first, um, pop up or first, you know, try for it, it was, uh, it was a great, great offering. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And, um, of course, you know, being the first time and just being good food, I just couldn't, um, couldn't help myself. I had to take a lot of, take a lot of pictures, take a lot of good, um, uh, pics. So I wouldn't forget of uh, the good mm-hmm. food I would, uh, yeah. So which enjoy. one is that one? Moving on, um, to the <laughs> never forgot. <laughs> never. We never forgot. I just remember it was a it was a good time. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was out there. According to my notes, though, this was the Danny Boy. So <laughs> okay, oh, there you go. So you did not forget. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't because the notes uh, the notes told me so. Oh, there's also a pic here of. Um, uh, some vegetable here. This is a summer squash. So, okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> That's not a food group. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a food garnish. This was uh the next pop up back there at um at that spot at that spot. Um, this time we have the Rebecca. So the Rebecca has okay. the toasted uh toasted Ooh, bread there, the yeah. melted cheese. Yeah. So um, but we have some other additions here. Uh, one of the items that they had served here was this uh, big old latka, right? It's basically nice. a potato, potato fritter potato kind of deal. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, basically same thing. Um, and you served it with uh, applesauce and some uh, cottage cheese. Yeah, one of those things. Um, okay. I remember unreal. I mean, just kind of on a tangent there. You remember when we went to um, uh, what was that place in Texas? Uh, oh. Jew boy? Is it Jew boy? Yeah, the burger so. place. Yeah. 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 They served those, uh, those latkes well, too. Yeah. And they had it with applesauce. No applesauce and, yeah. Wait, did they? Yeah, they did. Oh, I don't remember that part. So, um, I was just reminded, you know, it's like, or maybe not. I don't remember now. I think I I'm mixing up my memories here. I think it was sour cream or something. No, probably but there's sour no, cream. there's no, uh, applesauce. I uh, would have liked it more if there was. Hmm. Yeah. Well, this, this, well, uh, the bad Jew did. So, um, they did it right. Okay. <laughs> did it right. Um, but yeah, this was just another visit. It's like, it was, I don't know. It just, you know, every time, you know, you keep doing it. Every iteration, thankfully gets like a little better every time. Mm-hmm. So this is the Rebecca. I see it's Ooh. nice and toasty, super melty. Like it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it looks great. This one was, you know, I like both, but this one definitely, I think because of the toastiness and the melty mm-hmm. cheese, like it makes it a little more satisfying. So, um, yeah, it's, um, this would be again, one of just many, uh, visits after because yeah, 
you know, Rebecca would definitely go hard, just like keep going at it, trying to find the next place, the next pop up, the next thing to do. And, you know, in her, in her mind, I'm sure like it wouldn't just stop here. You know, she would definitely want to do something more, um, over time, not just the pop-ups, you know, she always wanted, I'm sure she always wanted to hold on to the pork strami, you know, deal. But, um, as far as like where and how it's being used, that's definitely, um, definitely something else, you know, that, that she had different sites on mind for that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, this, uh, I'm trying to remember this next pop up here that we have not here, not here, but here, um, is, was in, uh, Santa Monica. I don't remember if, um, if there was another pop up there at the time. I know someone, there might've been someone else there as well. I'm trying to recall, oh, okay. but she was definitely there. And this was at a, uh, I think this is at like a brewery or something. I don't remember. Again, I don't pay attention to that stuff. I just go there for the food. <laughs> um, but this here, as you can see, this one is the Danny boy. Um, so, uh, but it was a lot more, I think it's a lot more loaded than maybe that uh, first, first time that we saw. Right. So definitely. Yeah. But this is, uh, this is the Danny boy and, um, yeah, that was real good. Um, I was going to save, I remember I was going to save like half of it for later. Like I was going to take it with me, but no, I think like as yeah. soon as I ate that first half, like, no, I need, I need <laughs> to finish the second half as well. So, um, yeah, that didn't last. That didn't last very long. But uh yeah, that's uh that's the Danny boy. That was good. That was good. I enjoyed that. And again, like uh like we've said before, like during this time this was around the pandemic, so you know, they would have to figure out like what they would do, how they would serve their food. Like they couldn't do regular pop ups or whatever. So everyone's like trying to order food, pick up food. So that she had like these uh she had these kits. You know, nice. you have the pork strami and then, you you know, it's all deconstructed or whatever. you build it yourself. I'm like, okay, I guess I got to work for it a little bit, I guess. So, fine. so, but she got brands. Yeah. Got some, got some merch. Got merch. Yeah. So that what was is that? that? It's a button and a bigger button. No, I think they're just, uh, they're just stickers. Oh, stickers. Yeah. Okay. A sticker and a bigger sticker. So nice. Yeah. It's, it's good. Um, so <clears throat> One of these uh, other places that she would pop up at, um, I don't have the actual like location here, but uh, there's this spot in Beverly Hills called uh, the Nosh, I think. And so mm. she would pop up there for a little while. And again, that's like a more affluent place, a little more trendy, right? So definitely a lot more attention as well, um, ga gaining over there. But, uh, you know, at occasion I would, I think I popped over there a couple of times and, you know, pick up the food and um, you yeah, have a good just have a good time uh, to uh, to enjoy that. So, yeah, just um, the Notch was like another kind of place they would go there regularly. Um, there is a couple of pop-ups, collabs that I wanted to bring up. So, again, as she's like kind of, again, continuing to improve and, um, and grow in these, uh, you know, in what she's doing and improving what she's making. Um, two pop-ups come to mind. One is first at... Um, at the Grand Central Market, um, oh, okay. <clears throat> with uh, this other gal called uh, named um, I think Elizabeth, I want to say Elizabeth Heitner, um, and they popped up at they did a collab and they popped up at Grand Central Market at uh, Wexler's Deli, um, and so you know uh, Elizabeth, I think. Heitner, she does this, she does this kind of Mexican Jewish pop-up. So she kind of has this kind of fusion of these two types of uh, cultures and flavors that come together. And so, um, she, she made some stuff, you know, Rebecca made some stuff. So some of the things that we had from this pop-up included, uh, this, this, um, smoked goat birria French dip. I don't know. <laughs> quite okay. A, quite a mouthful. Um, to say and to and to eat but yeah they, that was like one of the things that, and then uh this other thing i think we were seeing earlier is a trout pomegranate aqua chile it's very interesting oh interesting yeah um it was uh very interesting very refreshing uh very okay. great you know nice good flavors um that that uh goat smoked goat was also very good um 
I don't, I think, I'm trying to remember, I know he called it a French dip. I don't remember if there was a, like a sauce that kind of accompanied it or if it was just kind of all in the sandwich already. But um, yeah, the sandwich itself was, uh, was quite good. And again, like I said, they were over at, um, in Grand Central at uh, Wexford Deli. So uh, yeah, they, and they, and they would like work together on other stuff too. Um, So they, they became real good friends and stuff. Um, in the art of the smoke, um, this other pop-up, um, that, uh, comes to mind here is, um, at a spot that, um, is over in Lincoln Heights, no longer there, unfortunately, um, a spot called Gamboge and it's a Cambodian, uh, restaurant kind of do like, kind of be like a very casual food, um, cafe kind of style kind of do deal but mostly uh with cambodian so this is uh like a numpang which is you know like the cambodian version of uh like a banh mi you know mm-hmm. so you have like that bread um that kind of uh french style bread and um and the meat in there was the pork strami but kind of in a pate kind of style you know how you have that kind of food pate. <laughs> yeah so, um, yeah, so the pork strami was kind of prepared in that way and, uh, on this, on this, you know, on this bread roll. Um, and it was, it was real good. I mean, this was a while back. I don't quite remember. Um, yeah, it was like at least a couple of years ago when that happened, but yeah, you can see here the cross section of the sandwich, you know, again, it's nice. not your typical like sliced, you know, um, mm-hmm. pork strami, but yeah, more in that pate style. Um, but that turned out, that turned out real good. It's too bad Gamboge in there. Um, out there in Lincoln Heights, I don't know what they're up to, but uh, hopefully they continue elsewhere some other way. But yeah, that um, that is uh, over there with uh, with Gamboge. Um, like I said, you know they've, you know Rebecca's always looking for kind of the next thing, and she's done like many other pop ups and collabs. Places like uh, with Pops Bagels, they're out in like Culver on the west side. Uh, some places like uh, Employees Only, uh, that's out in L.A. Um, Lupacata, she's been at the Heritage Invitational. Yeah, just many other kind of um, places. I mean, I think we could even look at her, her Insta. Instagram. And, yeah, you yeah. know, you can even see like some of these things. I mean, she's been in Smorgasburg for sure. Um, but you can kind of see here some of the different things and uh, places that she's been, she's really experimented and uh, taken that pork strami with her um, and really taking it to different levels, which is, uh, which is really great. I think these days she's um, doing, she's, you know, working kind of as a, with a private chef and kind of doing her own thing with that. And um, Mm. seems like she's doing some stuff with like food styling and uh, yeah, just uh, again, just really deep into, uh food mash. yeah oh button mash too yeah see like i said huh. um yeah so i mean it's i think i remember her saying and she may have said it in you know other interviews too like one day you'll find pork strami like in the daily aisle in your in your supermarket you know It'd be <laughs> one of those things so maybe, maybe you'll find pork strami um one day as you uh, walk down uh, the deli section or something. Um, that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised it's not there already because it's, uh, it's that good, you know, but yeah, those, um, those were the three, you know, kind of heavy hitters we wanted to talk about. We had flat point, uh, we had heavy handed and we have the bad Jew, all great examples of great food, um, with good people and just, uh, examples of like starting off, um, you know, somewhere, somewhere small, nothing too crazy, but then like over time, you know, you get the recognition, you get, uh, the word of mouth, you get the popularity that comes with it. And, and you just continue making like great food, you know, every time and people will follow, make great food. Yeah. People will find you. And it's, uh, these are really good examples of them. And so I'm glad to have, um, to try them. Um, and I wish my I wish you were there for more of those visits, but I'm glad you were there for some, um, but hopefully more to come. Oh, there's plenty more chances. 
Yeah, plenty more. Uh, don't you worry. But um, yeah, again, burgers and barbecue, I mean, they're almost inseparable. You know, they, uh, they're they they're the biggest part of the food groups. Ah, yes, that's what you mean, yes. Um, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> did you have something else in mind <laughs> i mean when you say burgers and barbecue being inseparable i don't know man no you don't Not think many so. people go to one and then the other right after that's a very very you thing oh oh i see well i mean uh you'll never know you'll never know true there are others like you <laughs> <laughs> they're out there uh there are dozens <laughs> of us <laughs> dozens <laughs> But it sounds like we've come to the end of another episode. So thank you for joining us. We are excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. Reach out. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Dumb and Hungry. He's at uh, my underscore chow. You can email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com. You can send us your feedback and your love letters. You can find the videos here on YouTube. And you can also find the audio wherever fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. And I'm my chow. And on your next food adventure, remember to try one of each.